It's easy to dislike the Buddhist teachings on goodwill for several reasons. One is it seems weak and simpering. May everybody be happy. Even though we know very well that not everybody's going to be happy. There's also the question of whether other people deserve our goodwill. You may resent having to have goodwill for people who've harmed you. So we've got a lot of the wrong associations with goodwill, though. Think of John Lee when he was young and in the forest. An elephant rut came into the forest, and the householders nearby had warned him, don't stay in the forest, this elephant is crazy wild. But he wanted to prove that he was strong enough to deal with a situation like that, so he stayed. And one day, sure enough, the elephant came into the clearing where he was sitting. And one look at the elephant, and before he knew it, he had one hand on a tree and one foot on the tree ready to climb. And something inside him said, if you're afraid to die, you're going to die many times. So I sat down, but got back into his meditation posture, faced the elephant, and spread lots of goodwill. The elephant stared at him for a while, and then you could see that it wasn't going to attack, and walked away. So in that case, goodwill is your, was a John Lee's protection. It's good to think of it that way. So there's another time when he was with a large group of lay people on a tudung right next to the, the sea. They were staying in a forest right next to the ocean. And they, could, they were meditating, and they could see this huge cloud of mosquitoes coming in off the ocean. So he said, OK, everybody, put up your umbrella tents. Don't stay in the tents. We're going to fight off this cloud of mosquitoes with, with goodwill and no holds barred. And so the cloud of mosquitoes dispersed. No one was bitten. So when you think of goodwill in those terms, it changes the equation. It's not weak and simpering. It's a strength, and it's your protection. And you're giving it to beings, not because they deserve it, but because it is your protection, not only from the immediate things they might do to you, but over the long term. It protects you from doing the kinds of things that would lead to your own harm. There's also that story of the, the woman who was trying to converse with some nasty spirits one time. There was a woman who had come to the monastery, and the chief cook in the, in the kitchen had, had told us, this woman was a friend of hers, that this woman had this problem that every time she, she tried to sit down to meditate, she would shake uncontrollably. And sure enough, she was sitting there with us, and she started shaking. And John Fung had a student, Ben C., who was quite psychic, and he said, check her out, see what's going on. And she looked, and she saw these two horrible-looking creatures behind the woman shaking her. And so in her meditation, she confronted them. She said, why are you doing this to this woman? And they turned on her, scared her so much that she ran out and threw up. Came back and told John Fuhn what she had seen. And he, she, he said, you fool, you didn't protect yourself. She would have a light in her meditation. So he said, fill your body with light, but it also works to fill your body with breath energy. Fill your body with your awareness, and then spread lots of goodwill. Again, that's your protection. And so she did. But then she talked to the spirits, found out that this woman in a previous lifetime had been their child and had killed them. And they're afraid that if she meditated, she'd get away unpunished. She probably had already gone through pretty bad enough punishment, but hadn't satisfied them. So she asked them, what, what could she do that would satisfy you? I said, build a Buddha image. Well, we were in the process of building a Buddha image at the monastery. So Pen C went and told this to John Fu, and he said, you can't say that to her. It'll sound like we're using our psychic powers to gain money. 
So you have to just have to let her be. But an interesting lesson, goodwill is protection. And John Fung himself said that when he was dealing with people who had spirit possessions, that's how he dealt with it. Just lots and lots of goodwill. I think I've told you the story of the woman with Tourette syndrome. She came one time to see a John Fuang. She brought a glass of sugar cane juice. He took a sip and then returned the glass to her and told her to finish it off. She did, and immediately the symptoms came on. And he started talking not to her, but to this spirit that he saw that was inhabiting her. He said, Why are you ruining her life like this? I mean, she can't live with anybody. These outbursts, crazy outbursts. But as he told me later, before he'd said that to her, the spirit, he spread lots of goodwill. And the spirit said, well, she did this to me, she did that to me in a previous lifetime. And John Fung said, well, if you harass her life this time around, then she's going to harass yours the next time around. Do you want that? No. How about letting her live a normal life, make merit, and dedicate the merit to you? Would that satisfy you? Yes. And from that point on, the woman didn't have any of those symptoms. So when you're spreading goodwill, you're creating a good atmosphere. And don't think of it, you're s submitting to the other person's power. That they may be mistreating you and you're not mistreating them back. I mean, that's no way to end anything. If someone throws something nasty and foul at you, you just dodge it. And you don't pick it up and throw it back. And don't feel that you're giving in to them. You're just ending a, a bad story, a bad back and forth, with wisdom. There's that passage in the canon where Vipachiti, the Asura, is in debate with Saka, the king of the Devas. And Vipachiti is saying that, my belief is that if someone is mistreating you, you've got to mistreat them back to make sure they don't do it again. And Saka says, no, you have to have forbearance. You can't let their karma become your karma. Vipachiti says, but then they'll think you're weak. And Saka said, well, let them think what they want to think. I know I'm practicing the Dharma. You can't let what other people's opinion might be about who's winning the, the back and forth. Because all of these back and forths are just simply not worth winning. So think of goodwill as a strength, and it's something that toughens your mind, toughens you against your defilements. The defilements say, well, I want to win out this one time. I don't want to submit to that other person. You're not submitting. You're lifting, your, you're lifting yourself up. When your thoughts head in the direction of thoughts goodwill. Think of it as a form of a directed thought and evaluation. And the Thais have a nice way of describing directed thought. They say you lift your mind to the meditation object. Here you're lifting your mind above the back and forth. I had a student one time who was in the process of a divorce, and it was a nasty divorce. And so I recommended that she have thoughts of goodwill for her husband. And she said, well, this is not going to give him energy, it's not going to give him strength. And he said, no, it's lifting you above the situation. So think of goodwill as tough. Think of it as something that you need. You're not doing it because the other person deserves it. The question of deserving and not deserving doesn't come up. If you had goodwill only for good people, only for people who were pure, who had no bad marks in their karmic record, where would you find people to have goodwill for? Everybody born in the human realm has a mixed bag. So remember, goodwill is for your protection. And there are plenty of stories in the canon and in the Stories of the Ajans of goodwill actually giving immediate protection, but that also gives long-term protection against against yourself, your ability to do unskillful, thoughtless things. 
you have to remind yourself that any kind of happiness that comes from harming others is not going to last, and it's going to turn on you. You want a happiness that lasts. You want a happiness that's not going to deceive you, not going to leave you high and dry. In which case you have to have goodwill all around. <laughs>